Word family. If it's Tuesday, then you definitely know it's Bible study. Welcome to our Easter special as a Bible study. I am so excited to be here today. And joining me is two women of God, two women and one man of God. Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome, hey. welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thank you. Me too. I am so excited to be here with you guys. And we want to talk about the Easter special. This, I believe this is the main event for us believers. I know most people say Christmas is mm. the main event. But what, what do you guys think? Is Easter our main event? And the first question I want to ask you before you even jump into what we'll be talking about. What does Easter mean to you? When you hear Easter, what does it mean to you? And I'll start with you, Eric. Mm. I think... Easter is a very solemn holiday and it bids us all to just sit and reflect yes. on what is happening, not in finding Easter eggs oh, wow. <laughs> and, and, and sales in supermarkets and all that. And all that is good, but I think it's, it's, it's a Christian holiday. And I think it's also a very exclusive holiday. It's not because the government has said that this in these days of the calendar we will observe the holidays that's why we observe it no i think we observe it as a remembrance of the death of christ yeah. his ministry um his death his resurrection and his you know um uh, his appearing to uh the believer and then 40 days later he ascended into heaven yes so then that means then for me it means what his death means and the implications of that in my life, what his resurrection means and its implication in my life. And we later find out as we discuss that his death is important, but his resurrection is probably more important even more important, yes. than than him being in the grave. And so, yeah, that's, that's what Easter means to me. Oh it's God. a solemn, reflective time. Wow, I mean, Kenza <laughs> Nabisho. <laughs> um, I think for me, Easter um, symbolizes just the message of my my why as a Christian. Because as you said, Christmas sometimes it's very oh my God, yeah, Christ has been born, blah blah blah, or la dida because you know music. But I think for me, Easter represents a period of me just realizing, just in the journey of Christ's life. Now when it came to where uh, Samangaji. Push meets the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this is the son of God. He's been living with his family yes. on earth. And then now God tells him, my son, this is time. And for me, I think the prayer the, in the garden of Getseman, where he was telling his father, like, hey, this cup is too heavy for me to bear. But he's still told to push on. And I was like, you know, he could have chosen to just decide I'm the son of God. I don't know if he died. Mm -hmm. But that if he died. Mm -hmm. And then in his, in his death, people are like, well, there goes the savior. They were saying. And then he rose again. For me to be reassured that God's biggest sacrifice was for me, was for and Christ living, resurrecting means I have life. Yeah. Like I have life, but now I have life and in abundance, and I will have life even after my own death because I've gone out to meet with my Savior. So yeah. it's a it's sorry, it's a reminder of why I said yes to salvation, and a constant reminder of redemption. Yeah, yeah. Wow. that even as I sing the song "Redeeming Grace" has been my theme. It takes me to Easter for He died and He rose again, according to the Scriptures. Amen. And from there, I have hope to raise again myself. Yeah. Mm. What about you, Sheila? What does Easter mean to you? <laughs> well, um, Easter Easter for me is actually both of what they have said. Mm -hmm. And also adding on to knowing the redemptive power that I received because of what Jesus did. It's not just a holy day. I mean, in fact, it's not even a holy day because mm -hmm. it's something we, we, need, we ought to have or to do every single day of our lives because of what Christ did for me as Sheila. And um, it, it answers my why. Why am I born again? Why am I living for Christ? You know, the why, why, why? So for me, it's, uh, it's both of what they've said. And it is also important to know that the redemptive power of Christ. Yeah. 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 Wow. I believe that the master had to die for us to become the disciples that we are today. Mm -hmm. And and I'll leave I'll leave this question to you. What does Easter mean to you? And as you think about it, let's pray so that we can get into this. 
Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this uh, evening with thanksgiving in our hearts. We thank you for giving us such a beautiful day, O oh Lord. We are here because of you. We are celebrating today. We are celebrating this season because of the victory that you won by rising from the dead, Jehovah Lord. And Father, as we get to understand, O oh Lord, what you had to go through, why you had to go through it, what does it mean, O oh Lord, that now we have a new identity. We pray that your presence may be with us, O oh Lord. May you use us as your vessels, O oh Lord, special and set apart. In Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. 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 And I love what you guys have shared because, and what Eric said is that, Jesus came so that we can see his ministry and then his death and his resurrection. And I'll just start with the ministry of Jesus and what that what he did. He understood his assignment. He understood that this is what I had to come. Because even John 13 says that um, my hour has come. So it means Jesus actually did understand his assignment, you know. And the question that I want to share with you guys, what, what part of Jesus' ministry stood out for you? Because it was his sovereign plan. You know, what part of his ministry stood out for you guys? Uh, what part of his ministry? I think the the uh, the entire ministry of Jesus really stood out for me because it's hard to choose. Mm -hmm. Because they're all powerful. Yes. They're all amazing. Yeah. They still talk about them to date. Yes. I think for me, what uh, the reality of Christ uh, comes from a point where he was in ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about, oh, Christ was on earth, da, 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 but we don't see the reality of it. Yes. We, do, we don't see as if he was man. I don't know why. I think I think it's the whole aspect of divinity, but a lot of us don't see Christ being on earth as man. Mm -hmm. True. Because he was on earth and he was man, he was human. So everything that we go through, he went through it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and I always say this, and I was actually thinking about it this morning. I was meditating on it, and, and, uh, and it hit me that Jesus is actually my role model. Amen. In ministry, yeah. you know, the way he did ministry because we see his time of weakness. We we see his time when he was, you know, he was able to confront people. We see like everything that you go through in ministry, Jesus already, has already gone through it, you know. And we see to a point the, the, the sacrifice that he put in place. And, and, and actually we need to understand that Jesus was man. On earth, he was he was fully man, and he was fully God. But the human aspect is what uh, was greater than the God aspect. Because if the God aspect was greater, then it, we wouldn't be talking about Christ being man on earth. But he had to be man, wow. you know, in order for us to be able to say today, you know, even if I'm going through this, Jesus went through it. So when Jesus was, and I want us to change to to. Uh, change our perception on who God, who Christ was on was on earth. He was human. He was man. In as much as he was the son of God, he was man. Because look at it. You and I, we are born again. Yes, we are yeah. still children of God, yes. but we are men mm -hmm. on earth. Yes. It's the same thing. When Jesus was on, on earth, he was man, yet son of God. You understand? Yeah. Does that make sense? So we need to seek God, uh, Jesus when he was on earth. He was man. Mm -hmm. He was first of all man. And that's why he had to go through the things he went through. Yes. So the ministry of Jesus for me is, is very real because I'm experiencing the same. You know, I mean, I'm in ministry and there are things God has put in my heart in regard to ministry and the things I need to do. But I look at the life of Jesus because he was sent by the same God, the same Father, who has also sent me. Yeah. And and he has and in Isaiah 63, it brings it, uh, 61 brings it out mm -hmm. that you have the Spirit of God in you. Yeah. So the things that Jesus did, you will do. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of Jesus being man and doing the things he did is very inspiring. So that's I'm I'm unable to actually pick one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But everything that Jesus did in the three years is 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 the reality of Jesus on earth. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Thank that's, you. That's really good. Let me just support what Sheila has said. Yes. Because Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, mm -hmm. it gives us an account of, you know, a Sabbath rest for God's people. But the from verse 14, he says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, that is a qualification that came when Jesus ascended into the heavens. And by the way, we really need to understand that uh, in, in by Sheila saying that Jesus was man, it means that we can relate to Jesus Christ as the one who lived the perfect life yes. that we cannot live. Therefore, he was able to fulfill the mandate that God had given man at the beginning. So, and he's able to live that life relatably, not 
as someone who is distant from what we experience. You remember he was baptized. He was baptized and that also shows that he identifies with man's uh, frailty. And here it says, therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, um, yet was without sin. Yeah, let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we we are. Yes. It, it, it does not mean that Jesus was tempted by the desire for alcoholism, like probably I am or <laughs> someone else is. No, it, it means that he was tempted to the uttermost, the way you, you are tempted to the uttermost in today. And the holier you become, and the more you do not sin, yes. the more the weightier the temptation is. And what were the temptations that Jesus Christ was tempted with? Do you remember the three of them? Yes, we do big portion of them was to, for him to be equal with God. Yeah. Remember what Philippians chapter 2 verse says, he did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped. So he passed that temptation of equality with God. Now when you come here to that man man aspect of Jesus Christ, and in Luke chapter 22 verse from verse 39, uh, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. Mm-hmm. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. Mm-hmm. So this is not someone who is away from temptation. He's someone who is actually telling you to pray because he himself is also praying mm-hmm. that he may not fall into temptation. And then what happens? He withdrew about a stone throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. And Becky has told us about that. If you are willing, take this cup away from me. Yet, not my will, but yours be done. What happens after that? Do you see the way we go to the throne of grace according to Hebrews to obtain mercy. Yes. Uh, to the throne of grace to obtain yes. mercy in our time of need. Verse 20, verse 43 of Luke chapter 2 does that. And what does it what does it do? An angel from heaven mm-hmm. appeared to him and strengthened him. Mm-hmm. Not to run away from the cross, yes. but to go towards the yeah. trouble. Right? And being in anguish, being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly than the way he was praying before. And so you find that his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. That's what the Bible records. Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray that you will not fall into temptation. So what are we seeing here? We are seeing a man who is also experiencing the same temptation. Thing. This yes. is the same thing as, yes. as, 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 yes. as, as us. And then, and, and I think for me, this is the portion. Thank you, Sheila, for that because that, that brings us, that introduces Christ to us in a very relatable way. Yes. And this makes him more relevant today just as he was during his time. Yes. And you find that, uh, I think for me, the thing that really inspires me, I will, my answer to that question, which part of Jesus' ministry really yes. inspires me, yes. is his his ability to relate to man. Because when you look at John 17, it's a very passionate prayer about like how he's praying for his disciples, how he's praying for the people who will believe as a result. And he's not been arrested at this time by the He's just praying. And I think that's the prayer at Gethsemane that he was making. He was really, really praying, saying, God, these ones that you've given me, I have not lost one of them, uh, uh, you know, except the one who was doomed to destruction. Father, please keep them. And the ones who will believe because of these ones whom you're sending in the world, they are not of the world, but Jesus, they are in, but God, they are in the world. Protect them, be with them. Those who will believe on account of their testimony, let them be kept. Today, I think the fruit of what we are seeing is the fruit of the work that the apostles did. Yeah. Very true. And Very therefore, true. We are those who believed on account of the apostles who went to speak. That's right. And and that is God answering a prayer to Jesus Christ. And then he goes on to make a passionate plea like, you know, they will suffer many things, but Lord, I pray that you keep them. Keep them. And, and 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 they know you yes. they are in they are in me therefore they are in you because you are in me and i am in them like it's it's very beautiful the way he prays and then he mm-hmm. says glorify me with the glory that i had before and may it please you father you know like the way he's speaking to a father i think that is what makes it very powerful for me because 
there is this horizontal relationship that we have with Jesus Christ and there's also this vertical relationship that we have with him as our Lord and Master. Yes. And so I think that for me was is what really, really stands out. Yeah. yeah. Miss Becky, what does I think for me, even before I answer that question, I think Sheila has opened us to just mm. a whole new dimension, world, yeah. dimension. Because again, to hear, to see Jesus as man mm. and what even Eric has alluded to, when he's praying those prayers, you hear even at that time, I guess the man, he said he's in anguish and pain. A lot of times we put him at a place of his savior. So he cannot feel. Like, even when we feel pain, we're like, you know, the times we go to pray to God, I'm like, no, you're God who may understand. <laughs> <laughs> but you're like, kind of he made you, so he actually know what's working and what's not. Yeah. But Jesus felt hunger. The time he was talking to the fig tree, Jesus yes. now here he's crying and pain. Hardly now. It's sweat that had almost been transformed into blood. And I think sometimes all I see is the imagery now, the merchandise at Easter. Mm. People will be sold for that. Oh. Sometimes we, it's so we appreciate the season, but we don't see him as that. Mm. And I'm like. A lot of times when I go through pain and I'm complaining to God, and this was his son who became my savior and he went through these things. So even as you say, sometimes even when you sing a song like Precious, Redeemer, and Friend, mm-hmm. you're like, mm, friend, sometimes I'm on the heart of Peter, Jesus' friend, but he was a friend to Tina John. Everyone. Then again, sometimes we just him savior, we don't see him as yeah, man. And that's the baby. horizontal relationship and to man. Were like, like, ma- um, maybe a child who used to be sent to his parents, like at 12 when he, he heard, they were worried about him. Mm. Him is what saying, but me, Niko Church, Niko Home. But because even for them, they hadn't seen, I think they were just in, as their boy before now he transposes into a savior. So I think Sheila, you would have paid us up to he. And he was Kumona, man. He was as man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then now, so for me, let me get to my, my favorite. Yes. Not my favorite, but the one that speaks to me the most is in now John 13 and 14 when as it prepares that act of emotion in disciples' feet. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times when servant leadership is even preached and talked about, mm-hmm. and because I, and going back to the topic that we did on honor, again, please, you can go back to our previous episode. <laughs> this is not a plug, but it's kind of a plug. Because, you know, a lot of times when, when as leaders, because at least here, all of us are getting to lead a team, have, yes. are leading a team or have been leading a team, leadership is always nice until you have to be the servant. But we, we, misunderstand, we misunderstand leadership. It should start at serving. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus washed his Feet, the feet of the disciples. Now, come even Peter was like, "Hey, cheeky bro, why are you doing this?" Unadu. Yeah. But you chongo zewe to. But he, he started saying, "The one who who leads should serve." I mean, and from from service, like we, you'd not expect the savior of the world, and he knew from the beginning that he was coming to save the world. He's God's son, like literally, not a name. He has given himself on Instagram. <laughs> He's God's son. Yes. But he washed his disciples' feet in honor and preparing, and again preparing them again. Because after this, then he still goes and prays for them and prays for us in this time. Lot, yeah. For me, that struck me as at times when we think we are there, mm-hmm. we don't think of the people we are leading as people to serve. We, we expect when we are in leadership, we should be served. Yes. So I think for me, that point of humility always just reminds me, Becky, whenever you're in charge of a team or whatever, remember they're not there to serve you. Leadership is reversed. So for mm-hmm. me, I think Apuana mm-hmm. Kwangame Yeah, and that's, that Kwangami actually, that story yeah. has serious implications, by the way, because mm-hmm. you find that actually Peter refuses to be washed yeah. and what does jesus tell him if you I don't do if i do not worship you cannot have you cannot have Actually, a part in this mm-hmm. um, let me just, just read that verse you. it's a uh, john, john chapter 13, 13 mm-hmm. verse um let's say from verse 7 mm-hmm. so jesus replied you do not realize now what i am doing but mm-hmm. later you will understand mm-hmm. no say peter you shall never wash my feet Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. You have no part with me. That's a very serious thing yeah. for Jesus Christ to mm-hmm. say. And that means like you, you you cannot take part in what he's doing. You cannot be part of what he's doing for mankind. Yeah. If you don't allow me to, like how does you washing my feet relate to me partaking in in you. And it is because mm-hmm. that is the model that he wanted that to leave us. That he, and of, so of for, servant leadership. Uh, yes. for, so for Peter to refuse mm-hmm. Jesus to do that, he is essentially refusing Jesus' ministry altogether. Okay. So that's what that verse means. Yeah. And he's actually re- rejecting the discipling of Christ. The discipling of Christ. Because he was yeah. discipling them yeah. Yeah. to be so that they can be like him. Mm-hmm. So you cannot be like him if you're not doing the things. And, and to be like him, first of all, he had to teach them. And that's what we're also mm. taking up now. Mm. Yes. Because we follow, we, we are Christians. We follow the Christ, the life of Christ. Meaning we do what he did. Mm-hmm. We speak how he spoke. Mm-hmm. We, we look at things the way he's, he looked at things. Yes. So we are just being, we are pupils. Mm. We are taught by Christ. Mm. And that is why Christ is our model. Mm. You know, before before he died, he was Jesus', <laughs> Jesus son. Jesus' um, 
son of Joseph, yes. Jesus from Nazareth. But you know, when he died and resurrected, he became Jesus Christ, yes. mm. meaning the anointed one. The Savior. You know, but you see, this this name was already there from the from, from the, the foundations yeah. Yeah. of the earth. Yes. But you know, in order for him to acquire that name, mm. he had to go through the process. Yes. And it's amazing to mm. see that because of him washing the disciples' feet, yes. you see now him allowing himself to be baptized by John. Yes. Ah. Because when he's coming and John is saying, I'm not worthy, mm. Jesus actually tells him, it's very important you do this mm. so that we can fulfill all scripture. Yes. So that's Jesus placing himself under what is supposed to happen. And that is what his father said. Yeah. That and, and that was what he says that when he was on earth, I think it's Paul or one of the one of the apostles says, when he was on earth, he did not see himself as God, mm. even though he Philippians was. Too. Yeah. Philippians you know, yeah. so that the you know. Sometimes we think humility is <laughs> is how we look, you know. Appropriately quiet. Yes, you know, una tembe uko bend, but actually for you to be humble, there has to be a circumcision of the heart. Of the heart. Yes. What I mean is for you to be able to get to the point where Jesus got to or where he was, mm -hmm. there are things that in your heart that you must die. You see when Jesus was being uh tempted, by the devil from when he was from uh, the fasting. Yes. Do you know he was tempted in three areas? Yeah. The lust of the flesh, mm. the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Yeah. And he turned down all of them. And he overcame. Mm. You see, so when we struggle with certain things, and mm. because this, especially now, these three things are It's not that so, he hasn't. Yeah, you know? That's why the Bible says he's tempted <laughs> just as we are. As it we doesn't are. mean that the at specific it, temptations it, it, because that there was no social media, no, no. there was no lust of no, the no, eye. No, no they, they were there. there. there you know, know because I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't. And, and that's the relevance. You yes, see the relevance of that's the relevance. That time the, in the life of Christ mm -hmm. to yeah. today. Yeah, it's not at the that that used to happen. Kitambo. No, 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 no. It's no. very relevant today because mm -hmm. those three things have been there ever since Adam did what he did. Exactly, exactly. And that is why it was so easy for Eve to fall for the for the for the temptation because it was something that. Again, the last of the eye. Yeah. You know, the eye was like this thing looks really yeah. nice. Yeah. You know, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know, and, and you know, it's so interesting we're having this conversation because it makes me understand as to why we easily fall into temptation where there's so much counterfeit, and counterfeit can be so loud yeah. that we forget the voice of God yeah. because God was very categorical. Mm -hmm. Eat everything else, Except. but don't eat this one. You know, this very one that we are told not to eat is what That's we ate, you know. But you see, Christ comes and tells us, you know what? Even if you ate that fruit, even if you did the things you did, I have come to redeem you. You know, and that is now where we are today as believers. Yes. And now, now we get from the aspect, the human aspect of God, of, of Jesus, and now come to the resurrection, mm -hmm. where, where now where humanity meets, meets divinity. Say it again. You know, yeah. where now he comes from the aspect of being man mm. to the aspect of being Christ, mm -hmm. where the resurrection power comes in. There is a word there yeah. that 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 makes Jesus Christ the only figure in all of history who is able to achieve that role. The word is called propitiation. Mm -hmm. And it's not when you hear the word propitiation unto God. It's always used unto God, unto God, unto God. It's not it's not usually unto man. Yeah. So he was actually doing something upward like that. And that means that his blood was perfect enough mm -hmm. to quench the, the 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 wrath and the guilt that God had condemned the earth uh, with. Mm -hmm. His blood was what Jesus Christ could offer upwards that God could affect and that's that that God could accept and that's what propitiation means it means that God it means that Jesus offered up himself mm -hmm. as a sacrifice unto God mm -hmm. and God received that sacrifice as yes this is enough to rub the stain of sin and guilt and to open the door for mankind to access me again i accept this sacrifice this is the only thing that i can accept in all of the universe that can make me forgive the adamic did oh my get yeah. so when jesus christ lives that perfect life um one person said that uh, the the boy jesus um lived innocently he did he lived innocently innocent means that you, you're seeing baby ella or nate mm -hmm. or or talia 
they are innocent. You know, even if like they break a glass, you cannot bash them. They are just innocent. And you know, that's, but the time when Jesus becomes a boy, yes, that is when things now become serious. Because now he has entered a phase where he is able to know what is virtuous mm-hmm. and what is evil. Through obedience, he chooses virtue every time. Mm-hmm. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ learned obedience through suffering. It's in Hebrews mm-hmm. uh, chapter 5. If you read, you'll see that Jesus learned obedience through suffering. Every single time he was at a place of decision making, he chose the right thing every time. Every time. That's why at the point of being sacrificed, he is still without sin and therefore God can accept this particular blood to atone for the sins of though all that which was done. Mm-hmm. Hebrews says that those people were still laying in condemnation. Everyone who existed before Jesus Christ, it's in Hebrews, mm-hmm. was still in condemnation waiting for something that we will enjoy them and us yes. before Jesus and after Jesus. All of us mm-hmm. would get to enjoy together. And that is the, 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 the death uh, and the blood that was shed by Jesus Christ that was able now to proclaim forgiveness because God's attitude towards sin since the beginning was an attitude of forbearance. Yeah. He, wasn't, he didn't use to forgive sins. Mm-hmm. When Jesus Christ died, God's attitude towards sin changed. Mm-hmm. And attitude towards sin doesn't mean that sin became good. Mm-hmm. His attitude towards sin changed from he will now no longer wait he is now washing away. He is now no longer covering. Actually, the word that is used before is covering. And covering has the idea of throwing sin under the carpet. You know, like it's you're covering, you're covering. You actually, he winks towards sin. Like he, his eye is yeah. away. Yeah. He analenga your story so that what Jesus fulfills is fulfilled. And then now the covering is removed. It is washed completely and it is not counted as uh, unto them as as evil again. Yeah. That So those guys who are there before and us guys who are here now can experience the same blessing because of what Jesus, and that is the implication mm-hmm. of the blood of Jesus Christ. If, yeah. you, to, if you were to understand that, the, it, Yani, if you were to just meditate on it, mm-hmm. like for example here, there's a verse here, um, we've just written here, let's just look at the book of Job. Yeah. This is Job, when did Job exist? Over, seven, Job. over 700 years mm-hmm. before Job. Jesus, Jesus showed up, yeah. Over 700 years. Mm-hmm. Ebu listened to the cry of Job in Job chapter 9, verse 29. He's saying, Since I am already found guilty, yeah, why should I struggle in vain? Even if I washed myself with soap and my hands with soda, with washing soda, you would plunge me into a slime pit. In a manisha, there is no outward washing that you could ever do that could probably ever take away that sin. What God had provided was sacrifices to be made as a stand-in for the real sacrifice that was to come, which is Jesus Christ. And so he says, "Uh, you would plunge me into a slime pit so that even my clothes would detest me. He is not a man like me that I may answer him, that we might might confront each other in court. Mm. He's speaking about God. God is not a man like me that I might answer him, that we might confront each other in court. Verse 33 is a cry. If only there was someone to arbitrate between us, to lay his hand upon us both, someone to remove God's rod from me so that his terror would frighten me no more. Then I would speak up without fear of him. But as it is now, but as it stands now with me, I cannot. That is Job 9 verse 29 to 35. Let's look at Job 19, verse 33. And what he says, 19. Actually, it's 19, verse 25. He says, all that my words were recorded. So this is later. This is after chapter 9. This is chapter 19 now. All that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed on an iron iron tool on lead, or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer, and that is capital R, Mm -hmm. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end, in the The end, end. there's a beautiful revelation here, in the end, he will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, 
I will see God. I will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns with me. Job 700 years before Jesus Christ is not waiting for the time that Jesus Christ comes on earth. He's waiting for the time that Jesus Christ comes back again, again. in resurrection and that him he shall be resurrected in his flesh. Yes. He will be able to see Jesus. He will be able to see his redeemer in his flesh like this yeah. on the earth. And it's amazing if we think about that that way, we can see that man has been crying out for a redeemer from way before until now. And that redeemer, the only thing that is different between Job and us is that the Redeemer is alive right now. He resurrected bodily. He rose bodily with his body and he seated at the right hand of God doing the same thing that he did on the cross. With his blood, he rose seated in that heavenly tabernacle ministering unto God, pleading for the lives of men that they may come back to him and that God may be merciful towards us. And that is what Easter, what, what, what we're celebrating now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I want to thank Becky for queuing in um, because yesterday we here to talk about the resurrection that matters because that's why we are here today. But as you mentioned, Jesus did prepare his disciples and he did one important thing. He promised them the Holy Spirit and he said he will not leave us here as orphans, mm-hmm. you know. So I was looking at the things that Jesus did before he went to the cross. He prayed for them. He prayed for all believers. He comforted the disciples, you know. But for me, what stood out is that he... I mean, he promised the Holy Spirit. For So for someone who is watching out there, because I recently had to go through a, 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 a sudden death of a friend and I had overheard when we went to the walk, I overheard someone saying, is God really, does God really exist? You know, like why would, he, why would God let this happen? And I want us to understand it in the aspect that he promised us the Holy Spirit. So this one, I'll give it to Sheila. Who is the Holy Spirit? Please tell us, because I know there are guys who are watching us and they wonder, do I really have a helper that is within me that I can trust even when I don't understand? Who is the Holy Spirit? Number one, uh, the Holy Spirit is, first of all, God. Not like God, mm-hmm. not a form of God, mm-hmm. not uh, a part of God. Mm-hmm. The Holy Spirit is God himself. Mm-hmm. Now, the Holy Spirit is part of the triune, the Trinity. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. That means, uh, you remember we were talking about Jesus. Yes. Jesus came and he ascended into heaven. Yeah. Now, when you talk about uh, Jesus telling the disciples that uh, when I go, I'll, uh, the Father will send down the Holy yes. Spirit. Yes. He's actually sa- he was sending the last person in the Trinity. In the remember we said God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we are living in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, who number one is very real. He's not. Uh, he's not a, a pigment of your imagination. Yeah. No, he is God. He has a personality. He feels, you know, he speaks, he communicates, but he does that when he's inside of you. So let me, let me also continue to answer the question that might come. So how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Number one, you receive the Holy Spirit when you have given your life to Jesus Christ. That means you have said, um, I don't want to live the life I've been living anymore. I want to live a righteous, a pure life uh, and making God at the center of it. I'm bringing it to a layman's language, how we think, you know, when we're about to give our lives to Christ. And then you decide, you know what? I don't want to share Christ. I don't want life anymore. So I give my life to Jesus. So I have made him, number one, I have confessed that he's Lord. Mm-hmm. Number two, I have made him Lord and Savior of my life. In a manisha, I have given, surrendered my control and I have surrendered it to Jesus Christ because I have made him Lord and Savior of my life. You understand? Now we together to that point. Yes. So when you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't just receive him, of course, as man at a man. No, you receive the spirit of Jesus Christ who is the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and who is also God the Father. You understand? Yeah. Are we together to this yes. point? So when you receive him, you receive the spirit of Christ. Now, it is Christ who lives in inside of you. You become a new creation, what you call a new creation. So the old is gone. William Jamalik, William Sialukwa Nadunda Nanini Nanini is no more. Even if Bado Nadunda, like in the Bado Mokoka, is no more. So you are fo- your, formation, your formation is not toward the life you used to live. Your formation is towards Christ Jesus, who is your Lord and your Savior. 
I would get to that point. Yeah. I, I hope I'm, uh, it's, I'm really trying to bring it off. Yeah. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit helps you. Now, when, when you give your life to Christ, you don't have to say, I don't have Holy Spirit, you don't have to say, 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 you don't have Christ. Ananza sasa job. The moment you mesama I've made you my Lord and Savior and anyanga kwa life yako. Yeah. Actually anyanga kwa life yako ananza kukusaidia kukuwa kama Christ. The point is you cannot be like Christ. You cannot know Christ. You cannot uh, desire Christ without his spirit. Mm-hmm. Because we can't do it on our own. Wow. You know, and that's the difference between when you're in the world na sa hivyo ni umeokoka. Mm-hmm. Na kama ujokoka tutakuombea so that you can live, give, give your life to Christ. So, this spirit of God, he's the one who helps us to become like Christ. Ndiyo mm-hmm. anatuanga hizo desire zako za kwenda dunda. Ato kikosea, hakuwachi ama kuchapi ama na, you know, but what he does, he does something called convicting us of sin. Mm-hmm. Ata kuambia, iyo kitu nadu, si poa. Iyo si yangu. Yeah. Una gets? And that is what he does. He helps us to become like Christ. So, ata amu una struggle na dunda, whatever sin you're struggling with, so long as you're born again, allow the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. Convict na kuambia, eh, when you longele shule dum, ah, siya tunge angi hivyo. And, and how do you do that? By the word of God. Unona hii, this is our constitution. Yes. Yeah. This is what helps us to become what God desires us to become. You cannot be no God without this word. So jua mkwambia ufai kukwa hivyo. Now you become curious and ask, okay, so nafaa kubehave aje. Na unaanza ngakusikia mtu akisema, I can feel. I feel like ni kama tu nasikia sifai kuongea hivi. Si wewe. Juke kwa wale so uko unaongea tu. Right? So uko unaongea. So the Holy Spirit tunakwambia cheki, you are holy, you are righteous regardless of what you're doing. But this is how you become. This is how you do things. That is his work. Anakanda ni yetu. Hayuko huko kwa hewa. You're not, you know, it's, it's not a, a, a figment of your, a pigment of your imagination. No. He's real. And he lives inside of us. You know, yenda na kupatia hanga ya kusoma word. Yenda na kupatia hanga ya kumjua. Yenda na kupatia hanga ya kuwa righteous na kuwa holy. So when the Bible tells us to be holy, hakuambi, hakuambi kitu yuko huko. Ah ah anakuambia kitu yeye mwenyewe atakuwezesha. I'm speaking in Swahili so that I can I can bring it home. Yeah. You know yeah. because these these are the struggles you have even especially even as, even as mature Christians. Even as yeah. Christians who've been saved for some time, not mature but Christians who've been saved for some time. We no, we don't tend to understand what uh, the work of the Holy Spirit is, what the work of Jesus is, what the God, work of God is, but now the Holy Spirit is the one who helps us. Mm-hmm. So when Jesus died, do you know how powerful? Let me show you how powerful that spirit, the spirit that we have in us is that Holy Spirit, that spirit of God that is in me and in her and in her and in him, he's the same one who raised Jesus from the dead. He's the same guy. He's the same spirit. When he ali, ali resurrect Christ from the dead. So that is how powerful he is. That he can resurrect anything that is dead in you. Amen. And he lives in you. So the reason as why we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the same reason that we're trying to show you right now because of the one who lives in us. Mm. And the resurrection, resurrection in a fat in a manisha ufufuo. Mm. I'm right, yeah. Ufufuo. Unapata. Lakini si ufufuo wa binadamu. Let me give you an example. In the Bible, there's a guy called Raz- Lazarus. Sorry. Lazarus alikuwa, alikuwa bestia Christ sana. Alikuwa bestia Jesus. Ile time Jesus alikuwa kwa earth. They were very good friends. So at some point, he he got sick and he died. So uh, Jesus, uh, the sisters of Lazarus are kind of you. So come and be, your friend has died. So Jesus, being ma- the man he was on earth, he wept. Of course, if you lose someone, you cry, right? So he wept. Eventually, after four days, akenda kwa kina Lazarus. Lakini haku fika hiyo siku, alika kakidogo hiyo area, ka hilo wa siyo nini nini, alafundi haka decide anenda kwa Lazarus. Kwenda kwa Lazarus, he wept again. But after he wept, the power that was in him, the, the spirit of God that you are talking about, haka mweze sha, jwa likuwa na jelo authority haka unayo, kutoa kuita Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus ha, uh, lived. He, he came alive. But after some time, of course, he died. You know, now the difference between Lazarus and Jesus Christ is something called the resurrection that is eternal. Kumanisha, when Christ, when Jesus and the daddy na akakwa resurrected, hata kufa tena. And that is the hope you and I and all of us here have. 
and that's why we celebrate it's, it's, Easter. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And, and and it's amazing that even after Lazarus was raised from the dead, he died again. Yeah. He died again. I mean, anybody? <laughs> he he did. Again. Lazarus, he <laughs> but died. Jesus did not die again. But actually, Jesus used the the death of Lazarus to preach about himself as the resurrection to right. life. Yes. And when when the Bible speaks about life, mm-hmm. it speaks about eternal life. Eternal like life. And and dying mm-hmm. like the state of not yeah. able to be dead anymore mm-hmm. forever. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. living in God, mm. we may get, mm. and it's amazing that Jesus actually uses that moment to, you know, <laughs> um, one of my friends usually says that it's very important that Jesus Christ had to say, "Lazarus, come, come and get some matu, come out." Hey. All the bodies well, that all are the people who are dead, they are buried in that tomb. Wange fufuka wote. Now ali fufuka when Jesus will die. When Jesus will die, some people actually came back. To yes, to life. Jesus yes. Died. Even when Elijah yeah. or is it Elisha or Elijah, ali rushwa kwa tomb. Eh, yeah, exactly. Wasi ali fufuka. Guys, when Elijah yake ili ili guza hizo bones. Wasi wakafuka. Imagine. And that is the power. That's the power that is in Jesus Christ. Yes. And so imagine Lazarus come out and he came out having been wrapped just go read the story they will put a scripture reference there for you to for you to check it out yeah. great great amazing and um now that we know who the holy spirit is we're here to talk about the resurrection that matters you know what does this mean to us as believers because i see that i was in high school and i and i was in a catholic school and we really glorified the death of jesus because we would you know, the whole entire process now na kuna msiame anabeba cross eh is a story zote but after jesus has risen from the dead then mm. what wow wonderful question yeah. you know like paul was saying um we preach we preach christ and him crucified um i i think I think that has really led people to focus on the crucifixion a lot mm. and you're not saying it's wrong but um, that there's there's the um, uh, not a proper I don't say some translations there's, are wrong there's an imbalance there's an imbalance mm. in it the right way to say it yeah. is and we preach Christ and him having been crucified him having been crucified means a, a state that was once and it's no longer therefore a, res- a resurrected Christ is of more use mm-hmm to you but a crucified Christ is equally as powerful because he brings you to a place of wanting a mediator like job because a crucified Christ should get you to a place of thinking okay why would god sacrifice his only son what is the merit behind this argument or oh, that's when you come and realize oh i am a sinner and someone has died in my place but thanks be to god that he did not remain dead he did not remain on the cross he rose from the dead and actually ascended so we'll actually find a lot of western things have put jesus on the cross and the emphasis on the cross a lot when you go towards the eastern part of the world the middle east and everything the aspect of jesus christ raising from the dead is glorified a lot that they forget the cross and people in the west have and even some of us have just glorified a god who is uh, on the cross uh, as opposed to being resurrected but the true view is actually a balanced view of both that this is what the cross does for me and this is what the resurrection does for me and a, and a resurrected Jesus Christ is of so much value i don't know how to explain it like hope is something that is so certain you know like because Jesus is alive then i know and i know and i know see there hi guys i hope this i hope this email finds you well you know you know that <laughs> the email has not found me well <laughs> your hope is uncertain oh, yeah. you know that kind of hope the english translation of hope is usually it has a lot of uncertainty into it but the hope that the bible talks about the hope that the bible talks about is something that is very very certain it's so certain that it has no shade of and and the bible says that hope that is seen is no hope at all so the fact that we can actually see jesus christ resurrected yes. we're not seeing him physically but we know mm. we are certain that one day we will be with him Amen. and like job you know we will see the resurrected like in the flesh and it's a, in the flesh is important because jesus did not resurrect spiritually yes. you know it's not his spirit that rose his flesh his body yes. actually he rose this like Sheila has told us that the spirit of god raised jesus from the dead jesus did not raise himself the spirit of god rose, rose him, him from, the from the dead yeah. and when he rose he rose bodily in flesh and ascended in the flesh and jesus is in heaven as a man 
as the Adam that we did not have before. That's why he's sitting with all power and all authority and all dominion. And one day he's coming to exercise it properly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, thank you. Thank you, Eric. And I think we also need to make it clear yes. that we as believers, we have a balance. Mm-hmm. What makes us uh, uh, certain on this hope is the death mm. and the resurrection. So you can't pick one and leave yeah. the other. Yeah. You can't emphasize one and leave the other. It is the death and the resurrection. Both of them play a very huge role in our lives as believers. Sure. Huge. So what is some? Oh, you know, death, death. Don't leave it at that. Mm. So you can't say, uh, did Jesus died on the cross? No. It has yeah. to be Jesus died on the and cross rose and rose, rose, rose again. Yes. Now exactly. that one is complete. Yeah, exactly. And that's where our exactly. conviction comes in. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Look at Paul first, uh, as that first uh, in, in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, he mm-hmm. says that I may know him and the, and the power of his resurrection. You know, and then he goes back to also the death of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. He wants to understand not just the resurrection, but he wants to understand the resurrection. Yeah. He wants to fellowship. He wants to know the death mm-hmm. and he wants to know the fellowship of his suffering. Mm-hmm. He wants to fellowship with Jesus in his suffering, mm. in his death, mm. and to share in his resurrection. Like it's the, it's our entire experience. You yeah. just can't yeah. take one yeah. and leave another. Yeah. You can't yeah. pick and choose. Yeah. 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 And even as we come to the end of this, my last question would be, what does the resurrected life look like? And I'll start with you, Becky. Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> what does the resurrection... Because, I mean, now we are... Yeah. New, <laughs> you're Thanks. a new identity. What does that life look like? And you can even tell us from your own personal experience because you're living that life you're now a believer you're now Mm -hmm. exercising that faith so what does that life look like i think for me i'd say because even there's a place when where he himself says um i'm the resurrection hey (laughs) the resurrection and the life so i think that life that christ says for me gives me like i know sometimes it's cliche when jesus says Christ do life yangu, but it gives me the power to live on yeah. earth, like yeah. as a Rebecca or Sheke Mwangi on earth. Yes. But it gives me hope for eternal glory mm. and eternal life. Mm. That I know that once I die mm. in the physical, mm. I'm still going to be rejoined again with him. So there's a hope for for life on earth. Mm. But even like John, hope for I will see Christ again and I will continue eternally in him. Mm. And the encouragement will always be I may pass through a lot. Because again, to pass through a lot doesn't mean God has forgotten you or anything. But even my hope is like Christ still went through that as Jesus and arose. So for me, there's it gives me hope, hope for now and hope eternal in glory. Yeah. 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 What about for you, Sheila? Um, a resurrected life. Number one is an awareness. For me, it's an awareness yeah. of what, uh, the, you know, what Jesus did for me. I'm not living in vain. No, 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 no. My living is not in vain. Yeah. And that is very clear. Yeah. Even if nothing else is clear. And also, number two, the clarity I have is the hope I have in Christ. The Bible says that uh, uh, for Christ in me, mm. the hope of all glory. Amen. You understand? Yeah. So, and listen, it's not a pastoral thing or somebody who's been in church thing. No, 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 no. It's for anybody who is watching this and has just given their life to Christ now or gave their life to Christ last Sunday or the other Sunday or whatever, you uh, you belong to this category of people. Why? Because the moment you said yes to Jesus Christ, you became his righteousness. You know? Yeah. So you you have that hope. Atakama, even if you don't feel like it, because sometimes I think we go with feelings. Yeah. It's not a feeling thing. It's a belief thing. It's also understanding, eh, Christ, the day na manisha, hunger for that. Hunger to know why he died for you. What does it mean to you as a born again believer? What does the resurrection mean to you as a born again believer? Pursue it if you may. Watch someone's if you may. Study the word if you may for you to understand. Because if you miss it, that's where back, things like backsliding come in. Because there's a dependability of men rather than on God. So I will I will urge you to pursue it because what I have, you who is watching, you also have it. Yeah, which is the hope of all glory. Thank you so much for tuning with us today. We usually have our services every Sunday, 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> That's going to Kesha. That's our Kesha time. Kesha time. Kesha time loading. 8 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. And our second service from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And our Bible study is every Tuesday from 8 p.m. Yes, that was the one. 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. Thank you guys for tuning in. See you guys next Tuesday. Bye. Bye.